Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And it's PJ. And we're here back in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> for this, uh, we're, sure. we're going we're to finish it out at home, buddy. And uh, it's, it's been a while on the road, just coming back from uh, Florida. And boy, are our arms tired, right? That's right, man. I am so tired. My arms are tired. I'm just <laughs> flapping away there. <laughs> what the heck was that? You look like a goose. No. Um, so anyway, uh, before we, we'll, we'll talk about that other game, but I'm just going to say really quickly here, the, um, you know, as you can see in the standings here, I don't know, is this, do we, if we win this game today, we've got four games left. Do we clinch this one if we beat the Nemesis today? Do we, uh, we're three games up. And there's only there's still what three games left? Four games. So I guess technically speaking, four games left. It, we could not. Yeah. Up. No, there'd still be at least. Uh, yeah, there'd still be a chance. And then again, it, it depends. If it, if we win today, obviously the nemesis <laughs> drop out of the. They'll drop a game back. Yeah. So they it makes it harder. They'll be four games out. Um, by the same token, if the sirloins win, you know they're still in the hunt. They're still putting pressure on us. So mm. we got to hope. That the sirloin so it will lose uh, their game, uh, their next game here. Yeah, and, and that will help us out greatly. Then after that, the sirloins and the nemesis meet each other. They play two more games of their last four the rest of the season. So, uh, yeah. But here Nemesis we are. the Masama Makasa. <laughs> here we are sitting <laughs> at, at 500, and let's talk a little bit about that last game, Pete. I'm, I'm going to start by saying Frangipani. She establishes herself on the mound early in the bottom of the first, putting away D minors. But on the very next batter, Ada Cisneros makes her pay, popping this high archer over the left field wall, putting the water bullets out in front, one nothing. Uh, we knew the water bullets could go long, and we knew they would, and uh, we had to be ready. We did. We did have to be ready. We weren't, but we, we knew we had to be. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't too long, just on the next side, when Freddie Knox punches one out into the outfield with Bertha Banks on second, bringing her around. And tying up the game at one apiece. Japani then keeps things going by dropping Harry Bracketeer to end the second. She picks things up then to the bottom of the third when she strikes Lennox Ramsey for the first out. But her luck runs out against D Miners, who takes this one out over the left field wall. And the water bullets regain the lead again in the bottom of the fourth. Pete's second long ball. And starting to worry a little. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. It was a tight one. It was a tight one, and, and boy, you know, hats off to Frangipani again. What what a game she had, man! She's yeah. becoming one of the better pitchers on the staff. So yeah, she was she was my favorite early in the season, and she she had a dip and she came right back. Some of it was from the injuries, like you said, but uh, well, she got focused then. She dropped Colton Ayala for the second out, but then she throws a wild one to the next batter, Bracketeer, that Eliza Peck has to chase down but makes a beautiful heads up play, firing the throw to first to catch the runner coming back to close out the side. Then in the top of the fifth, Magic Moore gets a hold of a pitch from Brentwood Garrison, sending it over the center field wall. And once again, the game is tied, this time at two. Nice one by Magic there. Uh, Magic Moore comes up big in a big moment. He's got magic hands, mama. Japani. <laughs> Japani. Japani then does something very impressive. She blinks Bracketeer again in the bottom of the fifth, this time on three straight pitches. And then she gets Ramsey again. Not on three, but she gets her again. Also, oh yeah, also on three straight pitches. And then she makes Garrison, her third victim, on four pitches. Pete. But she yeah, threw the ball. She was, she was cooking, man. In that it inning, was something to see. In that inning, she threw the ball ten times. Wrecked up nine strikes and three Ks. I think it was her best inning ever. I I believe it, but uh, I, I wouldn't be if somebody were to say she's had she's had other similar innings. I would I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I yeah. wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> well, she picks back up in the bottom of the sixth. This time, making formid formidable eight assist narrows her plaything. <laughs> then, Oof. in the bottom of the seventh, who else but the Bronx bomber Bertha Banks steps up. And Pounds this meatball way over the wall in right center. And the B-Wolves gain the lead for the first time in the game. Bertha Banks, Pete. Two words. Bertha Banks. She's money. That's why her last name's Banks, because she's money. <laughs> I think they've got little lines on the S's, like dollar signs. 
Yeah, it should. It should. <laughs> For the banks. Dude, how huge how huge has she been in the last few games? I mean, just yeah. monster. Yeah. She's trademarked the cash register sound. Like, ching. Ching. <laughs> she hits a home run. That's what Boy. you hear over the PA. <laughs> Anyway, Japani keeps the water bullets on their heels. Yeah, which me and Tommy will replicate now. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Japani keeps the water bullets on their heels in the bottom of the seventh with this fastball against Justice Mann. Benson Rushmore then comes in reliever in the eighth inning, getting right to work, putting away pinch hitter Menace Wrestles. He then gets his second against D Miners. And then his third against Adis Cisneros to close out the innings. Cisneros' second strikeout. Finally, at the top of the ninth, Elora Franco steps up and sends one out into center field, bringing in an insurance run, putting the B-Wolves out in front by two. And this night, it was a sigh of relief for the B-Wolves, who hadn't beat them yet this season. Rushmore then puts away Trespass Wade to start off the bottom of the ninth, and he follows that by dropping Justice Man. And it all caps off with this fly ball out in the right field by Amelia Kent and the B-Wolves win the third game of the rivalry between the two teams further bolstering their playoff bid Pete and here we are yes sir that was a huge load off like you say we dropped the first two games against the water bullets and it really looked like they had our number this year um, so again one game doesn't seem like much but when you're you're looking at possibly going down 0 and three against a divisional opponent that is that is uh, one game is, is uh, an awful lot it's one game too many <laughs> well, one, one game better than none games you know and uh, yeah so you, you at least get to finish out the, the season feeling good about uh, um, not letting your uh, your divisional rival sweep you yeah. So. Now, before we before we start the broadcast, you and I were talking. It looks like uh, you know Javier Hautier is no longer with the team. Released at the last game, so we will not see him today in this regular season game. Forty-one of forty-four. That's the seventeen and twenty-three Nemesis extreme defensive experts. Uh, they're also really good at power and they're good at contact. And uh, don't let them fool you. I mean, they do have a run at the title here, and they're like you know, they're going to be playing with their backs against the wall, so they'll be playing hard against the twenty and twenty B Wolves. Who are contact specialists? They have good defense and speed, and they have really good rotation. Yeah, I, I'm kind of liking our chances against the Nemesis pitching. Both their rotation and their bullpen are, are, uh, are about, I mean, their bullpen is about average, but their rotate, their starting rotation is less than average. So, the B Wolves could, uh, uh, especially riding the this offensive wave that they've been on for a while here. Um, Excluding, of course, the last game against the uh, the Water Bullets, which they only scored four. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. This the the B Wolves may be able to really light up uh, Ansel Caruso. Yes, I was going to say the Nemesis are going to have their starting pitcher, the Southpaw, the left-hander Ansel Caruso. And like you said about being average, he's like he's their best pitcher, and he's about average. He throws the ball <laughs> uh, with about the speed and movement as most average pitchers. He's slightly more accurate than the average. He's got a two and four record on the season. And a 497 ERA, which is not bad. He's got a 129 whip. Yes, and the uh, notable players, Jock Sports. Is that uh, on fire, that blue uh, arrow? Is that? Yes. Okay, so he's on fire, but he's not 100% healthy. So he's his uh, health may be an issue. He's playing shortstop. He's got excellent power and amazing ability to co connect at home plate uh, and a little bit better than average speed he's actually running faster than he has over the course of his career he's hitting 325 with 13 home runs jackie slam out in the center field she's got uh very good power a uh, great ability to connect and and better than average speed and she's hitting 293 with six home runs and then the locked in mefesto <laughs> i think it's rafael mefesto or rufus i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Roberto, I don't, <laughs> so, yes. Ma, Mafesto out in left field. He's got a little bit better than average power. He's got a pretty good ability to connect at home plate, and he's got about average speed. He's hitting 500 on the season though, uh, with no home runs. So wow, 500. That's yeah, Christ. that's pretty good. <clears throat> Man, he, he probably only played two games though. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say maybe he so, picked up on waivers. Exactly. <laughs> well, I gonna... really wish they. 
just just a quick sidebar mm -hmm. um, if any of the developers that happen to catch this game if you could put in a way where we could co go back and just scout the team we're playing and just see what moves they've made that would be awesome yes that would be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. one screen that, that shows that um <clears throat> true true okay well uh so the Beatles are going to be starting our star pitcher for his last regular season game Hurley Bender, the right-hander, he throws the ball harder than most. He throws really good movement on it, and he's super accurate. He's got a winning record this season. But he's four and three with a four thirteen ERA and a zero nine two WHIP. Yes, sir. And then our notable players, as always, starting off: Alora Franco at first base with excellent power, better than average ability to connect, and better than average speed. She's in three fifty nine with five home runs. Hanley Dexter is the superstar, shortstop. He's got uh, a, a little bit better than average power, a, a great ability to connect, and great speed on the base pass. He's hitting 302 with four home runs. And uh, Buster Biggs out in <laughs> left field. <laughs> the, the pregnant pause there. Are you looking down at a, at a clipboard there? Is it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of wished. I didn't have my clipboard in front of me, and I almost said Bertha Biggs. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> out in left field. <laughs> He's got a uh, great ability, a uh, great power, uh, a very good ability to connect at that home plate, and he's got great speed. He's hitting 417 with seven home runs, and he's been playing lights out as well as Bertha Banks. I'm surprised she hasn't made the notable players, Tom. I'm surprised too. Yeah, I mean these guys must have been doing pretty darn well for her to fall off that list. <laughs> but uh, we are going to get the lineup from the assistant coach here. It's coming up on the board right now. And it looks like our old, old, old faithful Hanley Dexter is going to start off batting first. He'll play shortstop today. Welcome home, Mr. Dexter. Billy LeBoink's going to follow him in right field. He's going to bat second. Batting third is going to be Buster Biggs, who plays left field all the time. Basically, he's the Iron Man out there. Alora Franco is going to be like, going to bat cleanup as she is off to do the first. She'll play first base. Playing third base, batting fifth is going to be the locked-in Bertha Banks, like you said. Uh, it's amazing she's not on the on the notable players, but she'll be after today. Gina Torrens is going to follow her up at six. She's going to play second base, her normal position. Magic Moore is going to play in center field as he always does. So it was, it, it's usually him talking to to uh, uh, to Bertha Biggs. <laughs> <laughs> the king of Steve Bonstour will be behind the plate today, catching, and Hurley Bender on the mound. Hurley will be throwing graceful. Four finger, two finger, cut finger, curveball, and slider pitches all day slash night long, whatever we do. And this is a sir. night game here. They got the they got it open, Pete. The roof open. Yes, sir. The roof open. Red Rock Park. It's beautiful. You can hear the coyotes towling out there in the Yes. Nice and relaxing, although we gotta we gotta bear down here. That's important baseball today. Yes, sir. And going for the nemesis today, you got slam in center field, sports and shortstop. Taters at first base, Moonshot at third. Pickleford playing left field, the adder and right. Staples catching in leather in second base. And A. Caroos, the pitcher. Taters, Moonshot, and somebody else are all tense. As we head into the top of the first, Jackie Slam, Jock Sports, and Mash Taters going to get a first look at Hurley Bender. Let's hope he doesn't hit him with the ball. All right, I had this low down, dirty slider. It's it's, it's, it's fighting me. <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> Jackie Slam hitting 293 with six home runs, 25 RBIs on the season. She steps in against Hurley Bender. Bender delivers a first strike. Bender with 79 Ks on the season. That one's outside, says so the umpire, but what the heck does he know? <laughs> right. He's been, drink he's been drinking since 9 a.m. It's one ball, <laughs> one strike. I know because I've been drinking with it. First out, ground ball for the Banks who makes the throw to Franco for the first out. But I've already thrown up. <laughs> Jock Sport is on fire and well, hitting 325. 13 home runs. He's playing shortstop for the Nemesis today. Short one out. Stop. In the top of the <laughs> That's in there for gold. Strike, strike one. That's in there for call second strike, and very quickly Sports is behind in the count, 0-2. Oh, Swing and a miss, oh. and Sports goes down, first K of the day, and that puts Bender at 80. Mash Taters, the first baseman, is tense and fit in 272 with five home runs, 13 RBIs, two outs in the top of the first. 
A little tip for you kids out there, swing and a miss by taters. If you've been drinking since 9 a.m., don't go for the low-down, dirty sliders. <laughs> Alan's high, ball one, one and one. That's what I always tell the kids. <laughs> <laughs> There's a roller to Dexterity. He's going to pick it up barehanded, make the throw over to Franco for the third out, and it's one, two, three in the top of the first. As we head into the bottom of the first, Hanley Dexterity, Billy the Boink, Buster Biggs going to get a first look at Ansel Caruso, the beautiful night sky out there in Arizona. Yourself a last chance donut before you head out of the ballpark. Hanley Dexter is the shortstop in 302, four home runs, 15 RBIs. 15. Those are, those are good numbers, Peter. Like he's picked up since the season began. We're underway here at the bottom of the first. First pitch in there, second pitch in there. Two quick balls. Hanley Dexter is from Ansel Caruso. Throws his first strike finally on his third pitch. There's. Oh, that one's low. He swings late, pushes it foul. He's even up at two apiece, but he's a tough out. Good patience. Now we're locked up at three and two. He's making Cruz pitch to him. Hits that one hard and it's gone, Pete. That is a home run. Second row back or so. First batter up and what a way to start the game. After solid defense, they come through with the home run. Leadoff home run. It's his fifth of the season at 16th RBI. Yes, and uh, Dexterous seems to be getting hot at the right time here. LeBoint, the right in 358. With three home runs, 22 RBIs. Takes the first pitch for cold strike. Has a roller to Leather at second base. Picks up, makes the throw to Taters for the first out. Buster Biggs is going to come up hitting 417. You didn't get that wrong. That's not a typo. <laughs> he's, he's got seven long balls and 26 RBIs. He's the MVP of the year, but he hits an easy grounder. Practice over to Taters for the second out. Now back. Yep. Laura Franco, the first baseman, hitting 359 with five home runs, 22 RBI. She's been struggling as of late at the plate. Takes the first pitch for a cold strike. Two outs in the bottom of the first. B Wolves with a one to nothing lead. That one was high. Ball one. There's a shot up the middle in the center field. That's going to be a clean single for Laura Franco, who's standing at first base. Go, girl. Way to get on first there. Here All comes. right. Bertha Banks. Bam. You hear that, Cash Register? Ka ching <laughs> Oh, wait. Now, yes. Yeah, a little too soon. Okay. We'll wait till she hits it out. Here she goes. There it is. No. Oh, she hits a grounder to Jock Sports. That's not it. That's an easy out for number three. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, uh, B Wolves pick up one run on two hits. Coming up at the top of the second, Hito Munchada, Brian Pickleford, and Javi Yatter. Bender threw nine pitches and has one strikeout in the first inning. Fuels with that one to nothing lead as we head into the top of the second. Hito Munchata. Hito Munchata. Got to watch out for Hito. He can really jack that ball, Pete. And he does so. And well, that one's in there for pitch. The offense going to go deep. They know what this man can do. He's looking a little bit tense out there, though. He's well. He's got a one and one. Bender had a great first inning there. Second inning here, he's in control. Oh, that one's hit hard. Magic Moore going back, but that's gonna that's gonna be way back. Wow, that is midway through the bleachers in center field. Hito Munchada has taken the wind out of the sails here yeah. at the 446 foot bomb. It's his sixth home run and 20th RBI of the season. The Nemesis show they're not gonna lay down, Pete. Now batting. No sir. Fielder. Brian Pickleford comes up. Good contact against right-handers. Hitting 244 on the season with five home runs. And Hurley Bender throws number 13, makes it in there. Nice slider to Pickleford. For the first strike, gets in his head, gets him pushing that one foul, and now he's in the driver's seat. Oh, and to the count to Brian. Bender back in control, and he's angry. Oh, nice slider. That's gonna roll to Franco. He's gonna pick it up, and she's gonna walk it and toss it to Bender for the first down. All right. Javi Yatter, the cool Javi Yatter. Looking a little tense, though. He's an RBI dud. He likes his outside pitches. And uh, he's uh, 232 on the season with seven home runs. He's got good power. And he hits that one hard into shallow left field. It drops in there. Oh, my gosh. That lands perfectly between three players. Um, Dexteros could not pick it up. Uh, everybody thought he had it. And it drops in there. Doggone it. They got a runner at first base. Stacy Staples up in. 324 in the season. Four home run. Check swing. Strike one to Ms. Staples. It's a good power hitter, good contact hitter. Slow. Quickly Bender gets out in front of her, hoping for that double play ball. If he can get her hit that grounder. Here comes pitch number 
Oh. Oh, she grabs it. Good grab by Tina Torrens. Otherwise, that was going to land a right center field to be a multi-bagger, Pete. <clears throat> Flash Levar. 245 of the season. One home runs, four BIs. Bender just needs one more out here. Pitch number 20. Inside corner. He was hoping to be done with the second inning of 20 pitches. He's got two quick strikes. He could do it within 23. Strike. Three pitch strike. A way to get back in business, Mr. Bender. All right, but hit till Moonshot up, puts the nemesis on the board, makes it a, a tie game, 1-1. One, one. Um, Gina Torrance, Magic Moore, Steve Montstor going to step in against Caruso, who threw 13 pitches and gave up two hits in that first Bender. inning. Score is tied 1-1. One, one. Both teams with two hits. Junior Torrens, the second baseman, hitting 252 with a home run, four RBIs. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. That one's inside. Ball one. One and one. That's lifted in the left center field. Everybody's out. Yes. And it drops. Oop, uh oh. Oop, oop, uh -oh. Get back, get back. Torrens rounded first base but thought better of it and wound up getting back to first. That was where she got back at the nemesis for that basically the same hit. <laughs> Magic yeah. comes up. He's got good contact against these southpaws. Watch oh, the first one. Hit uh, Staples in the knees, I think. Second pitch, he jacks, Pete. That is going back deep, deep. Out of here. Just over the wall in center field. Another home run. Magic Moore back-to-back -back games, right? 427 yes, pieces, sir. fifth home run, 20th RBI of the season. Way to wake up at the end of the season, the dragon. Yes. He's a Bigger dragon spirit. <laughs> That's your Steve Monster hitting 403. Three home runs, 13 RBIs, no outs. And the B-Wolves just jumped ahead 3-1 over the Nemesis. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And Monster is uh, even. One ball, one strike. That's popped up in the center field. And... Jackie slams under it to make the first out. First out. Here comes Hurley yep. Bender, who has hit a couple home runs himself this year, Pete. Hitting 316 for a pitcher. And it's not like he just started throwing either. 316. He's got to be the best batting pitcher in the league right now. Two pitches, one's a ball, one's a strike. The breaker is a ball. Two and one the count. Bottom of the second. Three to one Beebles now after that nice two run home run. That lands in the gap there. And Hurley Bender's going to hold up at first base. Nice single. All right, Hurley. And we're back up to the top of the order. Hanley Dexteras, one for one with a home run and an RBI. Dexteras, of course, the uh, B-Wolves shortstop. And there goes Hanley Dexteras. And he's going to be thrown out trying to steal second. Boy, that was two. Uh, <laughs> two outs. That was actually One ball, Bender. one Hurley strike Bender. to Dexteras. <laughs> Hurley Bender, Harvey Bender, all the Benders. <laughs> Fender Bender. Uh, uh, Count is even. Two balls, two strikes, with two outs. There's a smash to hit Moonshot at third base. Picks it up, makes the throw for the third out. <laughs> Hurley Bender should have stayed at first. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> As we go to the top of the third, the B Wolves with a 3 1 lead. Ansel Caruse, Jackie Slam, and Jock Sports. Bender's at 22 pitches with two strikeouts. He gave up two hits. Come on, Bender. Let's slam the door on these guys here. Caruse is tense, but fit. Hitting 200 on the season with an RBI. He does not have a lot of power. He's got, uh, he struggles to make contact, and he does not have a lot of speed on the base pass. He offers it that one, but he swang through it. No balls, one strike to Caruso. That one's outside, ball one. One and one to Ansel Caruso. Bean did knock out coffee. It's good enough to chew. <laughs> Ground ball to Haley Dexteros, picks it up, makes the throw to Alora Franco for the first out. Jackie Slam, the center fielder, is a tough out. She's 0 for 1 in the day with a uh, with a non-hit. Anticipated that first one was outside, ball one. Bender with a big sneeze, uh -huh. clean that off, rub it right on the ball. Gives it a little bit, look at that, gives it a little bit more movement there. One ball, one uh -huh. strike to Jackie Slam, the center fielder, made that catch earlier one ball two strikes to jackie slam she's a tough out though she's got a reputation around the league as being a tough out and that's fouled off along the third baseline so she'll get another pitch one ball two strikes top of the third swing and a miss and she goes down on strikes that's his third strikeout of the day didn't prove to be a tough out so much 
Rapids this time. Jack, Jacques Sports, the shortstop. He's locked in and well. He's 0 for 1 on the day as well. Two outs in the top of the third. That one just misses low. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. That's in there for a called strike. That evens up the count at one to Jock Sports, the shortstop. Oh, that's a little outside. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. Random people just step standing up and sitting down. There's a <laughs> shot in the center field. Uh, for sports, he'll, he'll reach for first safely. And there's a man out with two outs, and Mash Taters, the first baseman, steps in. He's tense and fit, a whole lot of power. Better than average ability to connect, but he does not have a lot of speed. He's in 270. Allen's outside, ball one. Taters playing first base for the nemesis today. That's in there for cold strike. One ball, one strike. With two outs in the top of the third, runner at first has some speed. There's a shot to Bertha Banks, who makes the catch on the fly for the third out. And danger has been averted. Coming up at the bottom of the third, Billy LeBoyne, 0 for 1. Buster Biggs, 1 for 1. And Laura Franco, 1 for 1. Caruse is up to 30 pitches, and he's given up five hits. B Wolves, three runs on five hits. And the Nemesis, one run on three. LeBoinks 0 for 1 today. I want to make a pitch. Still at 31. Oh, a smash by LeBoink. A nice liner, but that's caught by Slam in center field. One pitch, one out. Dag, it was right there. Buster Biggs, the left fielder, 0 for 1 today, hitting 414 on the season, as we stated in the pregame. He's been on a tear a bit. Bit of a tear this season. That one's outside. Allen's in it for cold strike. Quickly, the count is even 1-1. One, one. That's a monster shot into right field, <laughs> and it's caught. And the warning track with his back to the wall for the second out. Ooh. Good try there, good try. Laura Franco, one for one today. Real good power hitter, we know this. Oh, oh no. Ooh. Skips off the top of her bat, slams, waving him off, catches it for the third out. Top of the fourth. Hit till Moonshot, a one for one with a home run. Brian Pickleford, 0 for one, and Javi Yatter, one for one. Bender at 37 pitches with three strikeouts, giving up three hits. One, two, three in the uh, bottom half of the third inning. Not good for the B Wolves. Yeah, that was a one, two, three. Yeah. Hito Moonshata. He is one for one today. Looking good. Monster pitcher. Watch that one go by. The outfield's going to drop back deep for the Moon Man. Hurling under whips one of their strike one. Even if one apiece, top of the fourth inning, the people still hold a 3-1 lead over the Nemesis, who are trying to catch them from behind to get their shot at the playoffs this year. We're closing in at the end of the season. It's a big game. Hard curveball hit to Magic Moore. is going to be able to grab that, throw it to second to hold him up, and it's a nice single by the shot. Dang. Yeah. That's my, that's what I was thinking. That's a good dag. Brian Pickleford. A finger. You know, good contact with the left-handers. He's, a, he's doing well, too. And uh, he's got a runner at first base. Does not a lot of speed. So Bender's not going to pay much attention to him. Just going to throw that one nice to second. Over to first. Two double playing feet. Great. Way to go. Way to go, defense. Yes, way to pick that one up. Bender. Javier's one for one with a single. And now they got two outs and they're in a good position. He likes his outside pitches. And Bender's getting through these innings quick enough. Just through pitch number 42. 43 is coming in here. It was a ball. 43 is a another ball. Ooh, I don't know. I thought that was in there. Good patience by Javi Yatter. Curveball finally makes it an inside corner. Strike one. Two on the count. You know, it looks like the ump likes that inside. He gives a little room on the inside corner. We so saw a couple that were inside, and he, he made those calls. Two, two, two. My favorite count. Gets a little piece of that grounder, rolls it to Bertha Banks, who picks it up bare hand, throws it to first. Three down. All right, way to go. Coming up in the bottom of the fourth, Bertha Banks 0 for 1, Torrens 1 for 1, and Magic Moore 1 for 1 with a home run. Caruso's is at 35 pitches with five hits. B Wolves 3, Nemesis 1. Now batting. Bertha Banks is locked in and fit. She's 0 for 1 on the day, though. Hitting 328 with nine home runs on the season, 22 RBIs. Most of those home runs coming in the last few games. Takes the first two pitches for cold strikes. 
Oh, ball one. One ball, two strikes. That one's outside, ball two. Bertha Banks is also one of the most walked hitters in the league. And the count has gone full. Three balls, two strikes. My, oh. There's a smash to deep left field. Oh. Nope, not going to have enough. It's going to be caught on the warning track by Pickleford, <laughs> the left fielder. Holy cow. Oh. She gave it a ride, though. She did. I thought she shouldn't have swung, but then she then she did. And I thought, oh, maybe she should have. Gina Torres is the one for one of the day. She's looking good. She had a good start off, made a nice catch at second base, and then got that single. She's got patience up here. She quick, she's one apiece, bottom of the four. She's... It's a nice one, but rolls it right to Taters at first base. He's going to jog it down himself. Two outs. Two out. Magic Moore, the center fielder, is locked in and fit. One for one with a home run. Two RBIs on the day. He's got better connection versus left-handed pitching. Takes that one up the middle in the center field for a clean single. Magic Moore standing at first, and he's two for two on the day, Tommy. He is. He is. He decided that that first one was in there. He was going to go for it. He told me that before the game. <laughs> He's going to he? jump on that first pitch if they if they hand it to him. He's at first base now with a lot of speed. The first one to Steve Yvonne Stewart is a strike. And one the count. Second pitch in there, low and away. He gets oh. that roll into sports. He's going to throw it quick to first for that third out. All right. Top of the fifth. Stacy Staples, 0 for 1. Flash Leather, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Ansel Caruso, 0 for 1. Benders at 46 pitches. Three strikeouts and four hits. B-Wolves three runs on six hits, and uh, Nemesis one run on four. Staples is catching for the Nemesis. She's locked in and fit, but she's 0 for 1 in the day. Bender's up to 82 strikeouts on the season. That one's inside, ball one. 1-0 one oh to Stacy Staples. Bogus docks. There's a roller foul along the third baseline. Creative bookkeeping and pseudo-legal documents, bogus docks. That one's inside. Ball two. Two balls and a strike to Staples. That's in there for called second strike, and the count is evened up. Two two. Bender delivers. Oh, check swing. Called strike, and Staples goes down. That's four Ks on the day for uh, uh, Bender. Bender <laughs> fighting a cold or something. I don't know what's going on there, but. Flash Leather, the second baseman, is up. He's 0 for 1 on the day as well. Bender delivers low, ball 1. One out in the top of the fifth. B Wolves 3 1. That's in there for called strike. One ball, one strike to Leather, the second baseman. Leather with only one home run this season. That's in there for called second strike, and Leather is behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. And swinging a miss, he swung right through it. And that's uh, uh, the fifth K for Bender. He's getting, starting to get things fired up here, Tommy. Mm, Ansel Caruso is neutral and fit. 0 for 1 in the day. He's got one RBI this season. Two outs in the top of the fifth. Caruso, the pitcher, is up. Swing and a miss for Caruso. Strike one. Everschool.co.edu.py for career students and temporary teachers. That second pitch is in there for called second strike. 0 and 2. That one's inside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes to Caruss with two outs. Swing and a miss. Caruss goes down. That was a 3K day, isn't it? I think. So the bottom of the fifth, Hurley Bender, Hanley Dexteris, and Le Billy LeBoink. Bender one for one. Dexteris one for two with a home run. LeBoink's 0 for two. Caruss is at 47 pitches. And he's given up six hits. B-Wolves holding on to a 3-1 lead. Bender's one for one with a single. He's locked in and fit. Allen's high ball one. One and oh. There's a smash. Oh. That's a fair ball down the line. And Hurley Bender's going around first. He's pulling into second. He's going to have a double. He's in there with a stand-up double. Way to go, Hurley Bender. Wow, perfect <laughs> placement on that, on that liner down the line. Henley Dexteris. Two, uh, one for one. I didn't see that. First pitch there for a strike. Good patience. Dexteris trying to line things up. Second pitch ball, two. He's got uh, Bender at second base. One way good. Patience. Two and one the count. Bottom of the fifth. Three one B-Wolves. Ball three high. He's got. He's got. We can let him pitch here. Fifty-four, four or five pitch walk. Way to go, 
That's the free way to get there. Runners at first and second with no outs. And Billy LeBoy, who's 0 for 2 on the day, hitting 354 on the season. He's a fan of the high pitch. He bunted that one foul for a strike. Oh, no balls, one strike. Ooh. Oh, that's tipped. And there's going to be no play except at first base. So Billy LeBoyk is able to move the runners to second and third, but he was thrown out at first yeah, for LeBoyk, a sacrifice. LeBoyk was going to bunt, but then he saw the, the infield come in. He decided to swing on the last one. Good change. Oh, that oh, one's no. popped up in the left field. And you know what? It's not going to, sports grabs it. It's not going to be enough time for Benner to make that run. And two outs. Alora <clears throat> Franco, the first baseman, neutral and fit, hitting one for two with a single. Runners at first and I mean second and third with two outs now. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. Allen's high. Ball one. One and one. Ball two. That's lifted up into foul territory, and uh, it's not caught. So it drops. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs to Alora Franco. That one's a low ball three. Full count. That one's high. And Franco has walked. The bases are now loaded with two outs and Bertha Banks at the plate. Oh, yeah, I thought that last pitch could have made it in there. Got pretty lucky. Bertha Banks is locked in. Good power head. She's got the bases juiced. Good patience. Watch that first pitch in there for ball. And uh, that's how Caruso is throwing pitch number 65. No. That's in there. Fair ball down the line. Taters toss. And it's the third out. Dumb. Uh, top of the six, Jackie Slam 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Jock Sports 0, 1 for 2 with a strikeout. And Mash Taters 0 for 2. Bender's at 59 pitches with six strikeouts, giving up four hits. Buell's holding on to that 3 1 lead. Center fielder. Jackie, Jackie Slam, Slam. The center fielder's neutral and fit. She is. She wow. is. Hurley Bender getting ready to throw pitch number 60 here in the sixth inning. And there it is, inside corner strike one. Slam's now been released. Great contact hitter, Jackie Slam. Check swing, ball one. She knows what she's looking for, and she's not going unless she gets it. Swings hard at that one. It was Gina Torrance who picks it up, rifles it to first. One quick out, good play there. B Wolves, good defense. Way to keep these guys held back, but here comes the man. Jack Sports on fire, one for two today. So Benders have to be careful. It's the stars locking, lining in. We'll see who comes out on top. Curveball popped up. Looks like a good one pitch, one out. Franco's going back. Oh, and there's Gina Torrance. Ranges all the way over from second to get that out in foul territory. And we quickly have two outs. And here comes Mash Taters. He's tense, but he still has enough power to drive it out. So the outfield's going to range back. Really, Bender's got to be careful. Chewing gum. Jaws of iron. Throws a nice curve in there for their first strike. On one of the count. Ooh, that two finger just misses on the outside corner. One apiece. Lines up, delivers inside, jams him up. Another nice easy pop up. Bertha Banks is waving him off. That's going to be an easy out to close out the side. Be looking good here. All right. Bottom of the sixth. B Wolves three, Nemesis one. Gina Torrens one for two. Magic Moore two for two with a home run. And Steve Monstor 0 oh for two. Caruss is at 65 pitches. He's giving up two walks and seven hits. Come on, B-Wolves. Let's never out of reach. Let's get some runs here. The second baseman, Torrens. Neutral and fit. First pitch is inside. Ball one. Yes. That's lifted into right field. That's going to go into the gap, into the corner, I mean. And Torrens is pulling in with a double. So a leadoff double for Gina Torrens. Perfect timing on the hit again. This is the second one that's been doing a chase back in the corner there. Magic Moore comes up. He's hitting two for two. He's looking great today. He may be on the leaderboard if he keeps this up. Watches the first pitch come in, one roll account. Second pitch, he reaches out and luckily pulls it foul. Yeah. We're even up at one apiece. That one is in there for strike two. It's okay. One and two. Magic is probably going to skip that one off the plate. Evens up at two apiece. That one just inside. Now he's in. The, now he's in the good spot. Three and two, full count. That one's right in there. He hits a hard foul. Gina Torrance going nowhere at second base, even though she can. And it's another one. That's like the third walk I think today. Yeah, well, their starting rotation is no great shakes. Monster 0 for two. He's catching for the uh, B Wolves. It'd be a nice time for him to get hot. We got speed on the base pass, so a 
A hit into the outfield will bring in some runs. That's going to get into left field. Everybody's going to hold up, though, because it's shallow. About mid le left field, so not enough room to, to run. But it's okay, because the bases are loaded. There are no outs. And Hurley Bender comes up hitting two for two, like a monster, like a designated hitter. <laughs> it takes his first pitch of a strike. The pressure's way up here on Ansel Caruso. He flubs that one. A bouncer to Lillard, who throws the second. And luckily, it gets back in time. One down. Hanley Dexteris is a tough out and a utility player. He's a shortstop. Hit a home run to lead off today. Bases loaded with one out. That's popped up ready into to center run. field. Oh, she stays. And I, well, because I hit a button and nothing happened. Oh. <laughs> so I, <laughs> So rather than asleep. <laughs> monkeying around, I just kind of waited. That's all right, all right. Two outs here, bottom of the six, and this is, this is, who is this? Billy the Boink. First pitch in there for a strike. 80th pitch by Caruso. Right oh, in there, strike on. one. He's a little oh, bit behind. Come on. That's all right. 0-2 oh, the count. Hits that one hard, and it's over the head. And they're going to get two runners around here. Here they're going, they're going. He's going to come into third. And the B-Wolves get two runs. Great single there. Great single. All right, Buster Biggs, the left fielder, is 0 for 3 on the day, but he's hitting 409 on the season. Ansel Caruso is going to get it uh, pulled here, and we're going to bring in Binky Stevens. <laughs> Binky Stevens, the relief pitcher, has got a 5.36 ERA, a 1.49 whip, 22 strikeouts on the season, but he's locked in and fit. He's got a little bit better than an average velocity. His junk, he does not get a lot of movement on the ball, um, but he's really accurate. Um, he's not full he's not well rested so he's pitched recently he's got a four seam fastball a two seam fastball and a fork ball runners at first and third with two yeah, outs second. tommy g considering a substitution for buster biggs maybe do we give him a break here yeah, we're up five one and he's it's up to you maybe we bring in bomber was, and give him some work pitch. buster biggs is going to take a seat we're going to bring in benny balmer the pinch hitter and more than likely, he'll just slide into left field. He's hitting 333 on the season with a home run, two RBIs. He's feeling neutral and fit. He does not have a lot of power. He does, uh, he doesn't, uh, he's got less than average ability to connect, but he's got average speed on the uh, base paths. So Benny Ballmer steps in. First pitch from Stevens is in there for called strike. Hmm. Allen's in there for called second strike. Oh, no balls, two strikes to Ballmer. Follows that one off along the first baseline. Out of play. That's popped up on the infield. Second baseman Leathers makes the catch for the third out. But the B-Wolves pick up two more runs, making it 5-1 B-Wolves. Coming up in the top of the seventh, Hito Munchada, 2-for-2 two with two a home run. Brian Pickleford, 0-for-2, oh and Javier, 1-for-2. Bender's at 66 pitches with six strikeouts, and he's given up four hits. Munchada's neutral, but not 100% healthy. He favors the high pitch. Now at left field, Benny Ballmer. There's a shot, and that's going out. Oh, oh and it's just over Billy the Boink's head. Throws the ball into Gina Torrens, and that's a double for Munchata. To lead off, Brian Pickleford, the left fielder, steps in. He's 0 for 2 on a day. He's got better connection versus right-handed pitching. Munchata standing at second with no outs. There's a... Oh! Oh, and that one. And LeBoyne picks it up, makes the long throw into home base, holding Munchata to third. And uh, the other batter, runner was able to get the second. So there's runners at second and third with no outs. Javi Yetter's tense. Known as an RBI dud around, this, around the uh, league. He's also a fan of the outside pitch. So runners at second and third with no outs in the top of the seventh. First pitch is low ball one. That's a. Oh. How did they not? How did, on an infield hit, how do you? <laughs> Stacy Staples. Okay, so we shot across the plate. And uh, so far, Munchata accounts for both runs. But there's runners at first and second now with no outs. And uh, yes. Double play, slow roller back to uh, Hurley Bender, who goes to third for one, and then back to first for the second out. So there's two outs with a runner at second base, and Flash Leather, the second baseman, steps in. Swing and a miss, strike one. 
No balls, one strike. Inside. Allen's inside, ball one. One ball, one strike. Leathers is tense, but fit. That's in there for called second strike, and Leather is behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. Allen's outside. Evens the count up at two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. That's popped up behind home plate. Steve Monstour is there, makes the catch for the third out. And the B-Wolves get out of the seventh with very little damage, but it's uh, B-Wolves five, Nemesis two. Alora Franco one for two with a walk. Bertha Banks 0 for three, and Gina Torrance two for three with a double. Stevens threw four pitches in his brief appearance. Franco's neutral and fit. Playing first base, she's one for two with a single and a walk. Those are two good things. Mickey Stevens throws his first one to her. She's hard down the right line foul. Oh, one to count. Runs in it for ball, good patience. One apiece. Sweet miss ah. a bad high pitch. One and two, bottom of the seventh. Five, two beagles, a little liner. A little blooper to Ladar. One down. Got a little, Got a little chugga chugga choo choo there. A little chugga. Bertha Banks 0 for 3. She's playing third base today. One out. In the bottom of the seventh. That pitch is from Stevens is inside. Ball one. That one's outside. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Banks. That's an error for called strike. Strike one. Nope. <laughs> That's ball three. That's an error. The count has gone full. Three balls, two strikes to Bertha Banks. Ooh. And that's over the outside corner for a called third strike, and Bertha Banks goes down on strikes. Yeah, Two like, outs. Hoping for that walk, and that one was outside just enough that it could have been there. Gina Torrance, two for three. Wait for Ms. Torrance to get back in there. Watch the first pitch in there for strike one the count, 89 miles an hour. Second one's inside. Good patience there by the lovely Gina Torrance. As strike two, one and two, bottom of the seventh. Pitch number 18 by Binky Stevens. Misses two, two, two. There's way up high, three and two, full count to Ms. Torrens. Hits it hard, Pete. Oh, yes, this could be her day. Over the wall, yeah! Gina Torrens is back on the map. She jacks that one out of her right center feet, 386 feet into the empty space. Torrens only her second home run, fifth RBI of the season. Well done. Yes, sir, Magic Moore, the center fielder's locked in and fit. He's two for two today. With a home run, he hit a two-run home run earlier in the game. That one's high, ball one. One ball and no strikes. Check that, one ball, one strike. Two outs at the bottom of the seventh. That one's up, ball two. That one's outside, ball three. Count as three balls, one strike to Magic Moore. Moore <laughs> takes that one, count as full. Three balls, two, two strikes. That one's inside. Magic Moore takes his base. The crowd didn't, li didn't like that second to last night. Oh, Steve Munster, one for three. And there goes Binky Stevens. He fought. He fought. I don't know if I'd say he fought well. He's going to leave the game, and in comes Royalty Ocean, the rattled. It's a double uh, switch. Yes, uh, starting pitcher. And she comes out. She's uh, rattled. She does. She usually throws the ball pretty average speed. Doesn't put much movement on it. She's not entirely accurate. She throws a four-finger, two-finger slider on a changer. But as Pete said, there's another switch. Javi Yatter is coming out. He's going to be out of, in right field. And in the left field, normal is, I guess, his second place, second positioning, Relan Mephisto. I think, like you said, Pete, I think they brought him in on waivers. He's locked in. He's pretty fast. He's a good. He's a pretty good fielder. He's, because he's, and he throws the ball hard. So there you go. <laughs> I was tripping on my words. I figured it's time to just cut it loose. First pitch by Royalty Ocean misses. Ball one. Second pitch, and there goes the Moore, his second base. He's going to get in there with that stolen base, safe, with two outs. Steve Monstour, swing oh, strike two. What are you swinging at? One and two, the count. Royalty Ocean pops that one up into the net. He's going to make her get some pitches under her belt. Number five, early on that one, foul. He's handing out souvenirs to Steve Monstour fans. Sixth pitch inside corner, a little roller. It's slow to Lathar who throws and just gets him in time for out number three. All right, but the uh, Beagles pick up another run, making it 6 2 as we head into the top of the eighth. Ryland Mephesto is first at back. Jackie Slam 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Jock Sports 1 for 3 with a strikeout. Benders at 76 right pitches. Ryland Mephesto, like you said, batting 500, locked in, a real good contact hitter. 
So, um, so there you go. Oh, a little chug there. Strike one. It's got the infield. Is going to go guard the lines. Mr. Fister. Check swing strike two. And he's in the driver's seat. 0 oh, 2 the count. But he better get close to 80 pitches. Number 79. Misses inside. 1 and 2 the count. Fish number 80 looks like this. Ooh, he just misses outside. Two apiece. Stop the 8. 6 2. B Wolves. Winds up. Bender delivers. Ooh, check oh, swing. And that on. one just misses. We got a full count to Mr. Mephisto. Check swing, but that's a strike. <laughs> Inside corner fooled him, Pete. Now batting the <laughs> center fielder, Jackie Slammer. Jackie the Slammer. 0 for 3. 287. She is not liking early bender today. And he's going to use that to his advantage as he throws pitch number 83. Gets a signal from Steve Monstour. Winds up. That's a fly. Hits it hard, but that's foul ball. Luckily for Bender, he makes an equipment readjustment. Winds up, throws it in there. Jams her. Laura Franco's going to walk over. Toss it to Bender, who's there in no time. He's still eager. Late game here, Pete. Jock Sports, one for three with a single. Locked in. Can always do damage. The outfield's going to go deep for him. And the infield's going to stay where they're at. There's a ball on. Infield's going to go. Uh, gonna, gonna, I'm sorry. Corners in. Get the Bertha Banks, and that gets past her. Fair ball. I don't know if that was a good move. Benny Balmer picks it up, tosses to second. And Gina Torrance has a good throw by Benny Balmer in left field there. It's a good single by Jock Sports. Luckily, it was just a single. Mash Taters is tense, normally a power hitter. He's got a runner at first base. Just swinging him in, strike three, a nice inside two finger, split finger fastball. Curveball makes it in there, and he's 0 and 2. He's got one more to go. Swinging hit to birth the banks who reaches up and grabs it for that third out. Way to go. All right. Heading into the bottom of the eighth. Hurley Bender, two for three with a double handly deck. Stairs one for three with a home run and a walk. And Billy LeBoink, one for four. Oceans with six pitches in their short time. B Wolf six. Nemesis two. Hurley Bender's locked in and fit hitting two for three. Dumble in the single. Looking at his batting game. average. Yeah. It's hitting 364 with two home runs and two RBIs on the season. Pops that one in the center field. That's going to drop, and Hurley Bender's got a single. I think he's perfect on the day, isn't he? Four uh, he's, for four? He's got to be player of the game. He's put just as much offense as defense. He, this is maybe his best game of the season. Hanley Dick, except for those home runs. Hanley Dexterous comes up with Bender at first base. Hits it hard in the right field. That's going to land in there. Mephisto picks it up, so Bender's not going to get the chance to go to third. Two quick singles, no outs, bottom of the eighth, and the Beatles are threatening. Billy the Wolf Boinks, neutral in fifth. He's one for four with a single and two RBIs. Runners at first and second with no outs. Billy LeBoink is a likes the high pitch. That first pitch is inside ball one. One and oh. That's in there for called strike. One ball, one strike. That's ripped foul along the third baseline. We'll do it again. One ball, two strikes to LeBoink. That's inside, almost hit him. Colin has gone even, two and two. Oh, a throwback to Leathers in second to try and get Bender off base, but he got back in time. Ooh. Swing and a miss, and Billy LeBoin goes down on strikes. Good pitch there, that was a good pitch to get him down. Started high, went low. Betty Balmer up, medium pressure situation here. One out in the bottom of the eighth at 6-2, and the rattled Royalty Ocean throws the first pitch in there for strike. Her ERA is a 6-6-5. Misses on that second one. Ball. One apiece. One, one, and one. That one's in there to hit hard. Oh, into the Glava oh. Munchada. Good heads up play by yeah. uh, Bender to get back to second. Good catch by Munchada. Laura Frank on the first baseman. One for, for three. Runners at first and second. Two outs still. That one's outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. There's a. Fly ball, I mean a ground ball into left. Oh, why did you do that? <laughs> I meant to get Bender to get him home and I hit the wrong button again. <laughs> so, uh, Dexteris gets thrown out trying to get to third, which he shouldn't have done. He should have stayed at second. But it's the uh, top of the ninth, uh, B-06-2, Hinto Munchada, Brian Pickleford, and uh, the, the pitcher, who I don't think will Hinto hit. Hinto Munchada, the third base is neutral. Well, three for three with a home run, a double, and a single, and a walk. Double, so all he needs is a triple and he hit for the cycle. Munchada likes the high pitch. Takes the first pitch for a cold strike. Strike one. 
That's in there for call second strike, and Munchada finds himself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with no outs in the Oh, that one was inside. All one. Munchada was able to hold up. Looked like he was going to swing at that one. That's in there for call third strike, and Munchada goes down on strikes in the top of the ninth. One out, Brian Pickleford, one for three with a double. He's got better connection versus right-handed pitching. He's got one hit on the day, the double. Fouls that one off along the first baseline. No balls, one strike. Pickleford playing left field for the Nemesis. That one's outside. So the count has gone even. One ball, one strike with one out in the top of the ninth. That's popped up just in front of home plate. Monstour is out and makes the catch for the second out. Two outs in the top of the ninth. Here it is. Royalty Ocean is rattled and fit. No in way he gets. <laughs> this season. They're going to pull Royalty Ocean, the starting pitcher, in favor of a pinch hitter, Memori Oshima, who's a catcher. She's hitting 250 on the season with a home run, three RBI. She's neutral in fit. She's got better than average power, but she does. Uh, she suffers a little on making contact, and she has uh, very little speed. Hurley Bender's at 96 pitches. Hurts that first one in there for a called strike. Bender's locked in and fit. Puts that second one in there and very quickly, Oshimi Oshimi is in the hole. No balls, two strikes. That one was high. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Bender's velocity is starting to uh, struggle a little bit. That one's outside and the count has evened up at two balls, two strikes. There's a roller to Dexterous who picks it up, double pumps, makes the throw, and gets a Yoshimi at first base. The B-Wolves win. <laughs> that was a big win, and it was a good win, and Franco's Pizza is the best pizza in the world, <laughs> and you got to eat it. You should eat it now. Have some. <laughs> Enjoy it. I'll wait. It's party. <laughs> the B-Wolves win. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, early, again, the Beebles do what they got to do. They get out that early start. They get some offense. The Nemesis show that they're not just going to lay down. But then the Beebles put them back in their place. Two runs in that second yep. inning. There's a drought, there's a drought, a drought. And then the Beebles come in again in the sixth and show they really mean to win this. Seventh, the Nemesis say, um, well. And then the Beebles just lock them down. Sir. Yeah, Bender again. Um, much like Japani. Uh, just, you know, he just had control of the game. And a couple of pitches. Uh, really, just one pitch. Munchada went yard. Uh, nobody else did. Uh, Munchada was able to score um, after a double, after he had, uh, let off with a double. So, um, yeah, only only gave up one long ball. That's got to be pretty good for his uh, yeah his ERA. So, <clears throat> B-Wolves with six, hit, uh, six runs on 14 hits. Nemesis, two runs on seven hits. You got Jackie Slam. Going 0 for 4, getting striking out once. They got Mash Taters going 0 for 4, getting struck struck out there. Um, 0 for 3 at Staples. Mm -hmm. 0 for 3 Ladar. Ladar strikes out twice. Moonshotta though, man, three for four. He scored two runs, had a home run and an RBI, and a strikeout. I mean, and if he would have hit a triple, he would have hit the cycle. He had a yeah. Single, a double, and a home run. All he needed was that triple. I don't know how he's hitting 289. I mean, he every time we've seen him, even even when we weren't playing him, I think we saw a couple Nemesis games, uh, and he was just tearing it up. So I guess he just likes us. <laughs> On our side, Hanley Dexter Maybe. comes back. He's two for four, doing well. Billy LeBoink, not his best showing. Worth the bigs really wasn't there. I mean, she hit the ball hard a couple times deep. But they just got caught, so it's just a little bit short. Balmer comes in. Buster. Yeah. Oh, Buster Biggs. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I mean, Buster Biggs, I mean, he was 0 for 3, so I guess they could have sat him. I mean, they kind of brought in Balmer to yeah. sort of give him a rest because we already had this game in the bag, basically. Balmer comes in yeah. and fizzles. <laughs> yeah. For the Banks. Yeah, he did. She struggled today at the plate with a, a strikeout, although she got a, uh, she got a walk, at least one walk. Yeah. But then Gina Torres. But, yeah, not. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Gina Torrance, no, you got three for four, three runs, <laughs> a home run. She, she's got to be on the board yeah. there. But, you know, again, my favorite, Hurley Bender, goes three for four. He's in 391, Pete. Yeah, he is. So, yeah. That's got to be the best batting average for pitcher. 
Gina Torres was our answer to Hito Munchada. And yeah. she actually had, she scored one more run than he did. And she's been on a long drought. And she didn't strike out. Oops. Yeah, so that good game for her. Yeah, and Bender, yeah, I know. Um, so, I don't know how many strikeouts he ended this the game with. Eight. Well, we're, we're getting there now. So now we're going to pitching. So uh, starting off eight. the nemesis, yeah. Caruz comes in, gets the loss. Throws five and two-thirds innings, gets ten hits, five earned runs, walks three batters, and two long balls off him. His ERA pops up to a 5-2-3. He's now 2-5 and five on the season. And this looks like probably the breakaway game for the Nemesis. I don't think they have a shot after today. Stevens comes in, throws an inning, gets one hit, one earned run, walks a batter, gets a strikeout against Bertha Banks, I believe. Gets one home run off him. His, his ERA goes up to 4-5-4-4. Four, four, four. He's 3-3 three, three on the season now. And Royal Ocean comes in, throws one and a third, gets three hits off her, no earned runs. 1K of her own as well. Her ERA drops to a 6-5, and she's 0-1 on the season. And over there for the B-Wolves here, let me gather all these stats. It's so crazy. I can't remember. Oh, Hurley Bender gets the win. He pitched the full game, won a complete game. I think that's his second this season. At least. yeah. Gave up seven hits. Third. Yeah. We'll have to take a look after, the, after we get out of the game. But he gave up seven hits, only two earned runs. He had eight Ks on the day. Uh, he gave up one home run, as we said, the Moonshot. It was a big one. Uh, his ERA improves to 3.89, and his record improves to five wins and three losses. Yeah, that, that Moonshot was a Moonshot. Yeah, <laughs> that was. Players of the game, was. Pete. Look at that. The first player of the game is Magic Moore. He went two for two with a home run, two RBIs, had scored two runs, and he had a stolen base. And, uh, missed, yeah, Mr. Moore put in a full day's work. Yeah, Magic Moore really rarely does poorly. He's usually kind of hanging right. around in there, and then every once in a while he spikes, gets out there. Today was a good, it was a good time for him to do it. Uh, yeah. He's followed by the B plus second base woman Gina Torrens, who, like you say, has kind of been off this board for a long time, but she looks good on it. You know, I like that smile. She's yeah. three for four. She got a home run. She's got a double, an RBI, and three runs. That that could make your first star on any other day. Yes, sir. And then our third star of the game, there's no, I mean, you really should have given two of them to Hurley Bender. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because he's getting it, he's getting the star of the game for his defense. He pitched nine innings pitch, set, gave up seven hits, two earned runs, and eight strikeouts. But he deserves a second star for the offense. Yeah. Three for four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a triple two, uh, two singles and a double. For a pitcher, I mean, that's... Yeah, he's like a quarterback who runs half of his touchdowns in on, on his own. You know, he's, he's a, yeah. a better. <laughs> and then Tommy, Tommy G winds up with eight hits and a stolen base and six strikeouts with a contribution of 51%. And Pete J winds up with six hits, three home runs, six RBIs, two strikeouts. He only had a contribution of 49%. It's funny how that works out. You got three home runs today. Which is awesome. Six RBI. You scored all of our runs. You got all of our yeah. runs batted in. I'm telling you, I think I think it's you know the, you would have if you had the beaned, chugga chugga that if, you me. if you would have beaned a batter, you would have been on <laughs> front. <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> Post all right, well, that's a big one, and I like it because if you go and you look at the season standings now. Well, hold on, because we because we got games to report that are going to affect the standings. But if we go to my team and check out those stats, right, we want to check the team stats to see what Hurley meant, how many how many complete games he's pitched. Hold on, Fran Giappani watched a dodge. Are we going to go over this, or do you want to do the my team first? Well, I was going to say... Let's do we, my team well, Hold on one second. Was, yeah, my team really first. I was going to say Hurley Bender, he's... he's He's five and three. He's pitched eight games, yeah. three complete ones. Oh, okay. So he's so, got three wins. Yeah, three out of five is... games complete. He's got a shutout. CG. Sorry, next oh, yeah. to home. Yeah, right. There you so, go. Okay. He's given up ten home yeah. runs. He's given up ten home runs, but he's hit two hit two home runs. <laughs> you know, so it's like a net eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he's he's never awesome. hit a batter. So, yeah, let's go. Okay, I'm sorry. So, going back to, well, so after the game, let, let's go through some of the stuff that happened. After, what happened after the game? Here, Pete? We got, uh, let me start here. I'll start at the bottom. Player development, uh, weightlifting for Magic Moore, the 26 year old 
uh, center fielder. This is uh, rare to take on a new training regime. He could add 5 or 15 to his power. The 5% chance to gain the outside pitch. It would cost us 1.2 million. I think we got it, but... We'll see. Up from there, we got... Then, uh, we got Smoke Frederick uh, is a player that we've been keeping an eye on. He's on, on the... Uh, the free agent wire, Smoke Frederick has lowered his asking price from $9.4 million to $8.9 million. And he's an overall B, uh, right fielder, a utility outfielder. So Still seems a little bit, a little bit rich for me. He's hoping to, I think he's hoping to get on before the season ends so he can get into the playoffs. Yeah. The Rocket Man, Rocket Ramon, lowered his actually sorry. He was at 7.4. He's dropped it to 6.9. He's a C, C plus... Uh, 31-year-old right-hander. We know him well from our, our stay in, in Santa Monica there. So uh, he'll find a home at some point, maybe the offseason. Yeah, yeah. I'd be su- I'd be surprised if a playoff team didn't pick him up. He's a pretty good relief pitcher. <laughs> uh, and then Fran Giapani watched a dodgeball, watched dodgeball for a week straight. And that has helped her increase her fielding from 98 to 99. She is now the one of the best fielding pitchers in the league. <laughs> if a ball gets hit to her, and doesn't hit her in the face, she's basically yeah. got the out. <laughs> and hopefully yes. she could use that feeling prowess to maybe catch one of those that would otherwise be coming right for the right for the orbital socket. <laughs> well, we got some games from around the league to tell you about, Pete. We got 19 to call. Are you ready to do these? You got your drink of water there? Oh, yeah. Free yeah, boot. let me get a swig real quick. Moisten. All right, the first one's going to be our old freebooters who are on the road in San Jose to play the saw teeth. When you're ready, just give her a whistle. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so the Freebooters at the Saw Teeth, and the Freebooters jump out to an early lead, but the Saw Teeth oh. come roaring back and Ooh. take the game 11-6. Uh, the Buzzards Colorado go out to the West Coast to face the Outlaws, and it's a Buzzards win 7-3. Warblers travel to visit the Arctics, and the Arctics quickly jump out, but the Warblers come back and win it in 10-6-5. Jacks play our old overdogs, and the Jacks dominate 8-2. Wild pigs traveling to the hot corners, and it's all wild pigs, 9 nothing. Uh, Nemesis and Sirloins, first of two games with those teams, and it's all Sirloins, 10-2. to two. Holy cow, the Crocs travel to see the Burners, and it's Crocs all day, 13-5 over the Burners. Gold Coats and front runners, and the Gold Coats jump out, but the front runners win at 4-3. The Blowfish visit the Freedom, and it's a back-and-forth battle, and ultimately the blow- Blowfish win... 8 7 and 11. Moon Stars beat the Sandcats 3 1. Outlaws and the Herbisaurs, and it's Herbisaurs 11 5. Mm. Grapplers go to visit the Freebooters. Grapplers jump out in front. Freebooters come back. Grapplers back and forth. Oh my gosh, Freebooters win at 9 8. <laughs> the Heaters and the Moose travel to meet the Moose, and it's the um, Heaters 7 6. Buzzards at the Wild Pigs, and the Buzzards jump out quick 5 0, and then it ends up 7 2 Buzzards. The water bullets and the platypi platypi win that one three to one. Sawteeth visit the Arctics and the Sawteeth are killing them eight one. Jacks visiting the Overdogs and it's all Jacks eight two. Second game Nemesis at the Sirloins. Nemesis jump out in front quick, but the Sirloins come back and just beat them again ten to two. The Crocs visiting the Burners and it's Burners seven to six. Boys. Holy cats, y'all! Yeah, that was that was a that was a lot going on here. So let's see. So Pioneer Conference, people, why don't you start us off in the Pathfinder Division? Okay. Wait. Hold on. Okay. When you're ready. All right. There we go. Okay. Pa- uh, Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division. The Moose, with a record of 26 and 16, hold a three-game lead over the second-place Blowfish, who have a record of 23 and 19. They look down at the Uncharted Division. The Platypi have a solid lead now. They played very well in those in those in-between games. They are now 23 and 19. They have a three-game lead against the Buzzards and the Wild Pigs, and it looks like the Platypi, they don't have it wrapped up. They would literally have to lose all their games, and either the Buzzards or the Wild Pigs win all of them. So chances are the Platypi are going to be your division champs for the Uncharted. That's true. And then down in the Journey Division, the Sandcats, with a record of 24 and 18 have a one-game lead over the Arctics, who have a record of 23 and 19. 
That one's still close. Yeah, the Arctic's could play spoiler, but we're open our Phoenix Two yep. takes it. Raid Explorer Conference Seafarer Division. It's the Houston Jacks with 25 and 17. They're tied with the Detroit Heaters. That's a toss-up. Two dominant teams are doing very well. They both have a one-run lead against the front runners, and those those three teams, man, I mean the Gold Coats aren't out of it either. They're basically the only no. team out is the overdogs, but uh, what, what a race to the finish. They're all locked up with one furlong left. <laughs> yes, sir. And then in our very own trade division, the B-Wolves sitting atop with a record of 21-20. and 20. They have a two-and-a-half game lead over the second-place Sirloins, who have a record of 19-23. and 23. B-Wolves also breaking into the positive territory in run differential. That's amazing. Being down like 40-something, negative 40-something run differential early on to end up there at a positive one. Now, the the Nemesis, you got to feel bad for the Nemesis before our game. They had a shot. They're five games back now. Their season's over. The Sirloins yeah. did exactly what they had to do. They won two straight. So now it's still yeah. unlikely. The Beebles would have to lose like at least two of their next three, while the Sirloins would have to basically win the rest. It's possible. It's possible late right. season. So the Sirloins are dangerous, and they're making a bid for it. But uh, Beebles are in a good spot there. And then when you finish up in the Curiosity Division, the Sawteeth, San Jose Sawteeth, have a, have a tenuous lead at 24-18 record. They are just one game ahead of those Warblers, who in their inaugural season are hoping to show their fans some postseason baseball. They're 23-19. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, the last three games the B-Wolves have are uh, the Outlaws and the Hot Corners over in the Uncharted Division, and then they play the Herbisaurs. So um, they cannot take these three games lightly, but I, I would have to say I think I think you got to move. Uh, you know, I think things favor the B-Wolves. So the Outlaws and the Hot Corners obviously are um, are out of the playoff race um herbivores look like they're going to be out of it as well so these are these are teams that are have struggled all season um i mean the hot corners are a negative 68 rough run differential oh gosh so an awful first season for that new team yeah yeah there's yeah. There's, there's four new teams i mean early on the philadelphia freedom looked like they were going to be dominant they fell to the bottom of the pathfinder uh another first this season the outlaws and the hot corners both new Outlaws six games back, high corners eight games back. Sandcats first year, they're looking like they might take that division. If not, they're they're you know possible for a wild card. Um, the Houston Jacks first year, they're tied in first place with the Heaters. Their first year, they're tied for first place. The front runners are just a game back. So some of these teams are doing great. The others, it's either it's like sink or swim. But they're either great or they're just at the bottom. Right. The, the, uh, then you got the Warblers. They're making a bid for their division as well. Uh, so now I'm going to switch over to wild card standings. Again, you got the Moose are pretty much locked up. Division leaders. Sandcats are a run and gun battle with the Arctics, who are close in the wild card contention anyway. So even if even if the if the Sandcats don't win, oh, that's tough though. The Crocodons. Yeah, so I'm looking at this. If the Sandcats don't win, they could go to the wild card contender, but the Crocodons are only a half a game back, and they have a 35 run differential. So the, the Houston Crocodons yeah. could could make a last minute bid if they. Well, yeah. When you look at it, just as it stands now, you've got the Croc. Uh, well, the Blowfish, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, crocodons, Burners, and Buzzards all with better run differentials. So the Sandcats are going to have to end with with a record better than those teams otherwise i don't think they're going to they'll, they'll end up losing out to those any one of those teams yeah basically the buzzards down don't have a chance but the burners crocs arctics blowfish and you know, the sand cats are all really really grabbing at it there that's that's going to be it's yeah that's a tough one down there explorer conference the jacks saw teeth and you know the jacks have a tenuous lead the saw teeth have a tenuous lead the beagles look like they might get it Peters um, at plus 20. The front runners are just a game behind him. It's, oh man, it's, we, we have so few games left. Yeah. Only, only a couple, only three games left, and there's so many teams that are just on a sprint for the final. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a nail biter. Um, 
And uh, like I said, we only got three left. We got Ortiz going up against the Outlaws in the next game against uh, Shaw. Uh, then you got Levon facing off against the Hot Corners and uh, their pitcher T. Smith. And then Japani, of course, closing out the season against our divisional rivals, the Herbisaurs and Slackoff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be. I mean, we got to go in. We got it. We can't let down. We can't walk in there thinking these games are won already. I mean, we got to take them, and uh, we got we got to really. I, I, we got to put it on, you know. We still got to rack up runs, and we got to we got to put it on them as much as possible. Yeah, and make sure we're we're taking it to the end. I think if we can win against the Outlaws um, and the Hot Corners, I think we'll be. You know, well, I think if we win the Outlaws, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Yeah, as far as the sirloins go. Well, people keep as they play with some consistency, keep playing like they're playing. That I'm pretty confident that'll happen. But, but they have a, we have a winning record at this point, Pete. <laughs> winning record and a positive run differential. That was yeah. that's the big thing too. Uh, all right, well, plus for bigs. Let's okay. see. I'm going to run through the league leaders real quick. Oh yeah, let's do league leaders. Why not? <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, right. four batters, and then yeah. on, on the batting average, they really turned around. Buster Big second, Magic more fourth. Or Franco sixth, Billy Blank seventh, or second, fourth, sixth. Yeah, I can count. <laughs> and we're looking at the outlaws. I don't see any outlaws anywhere on this list. There's Ronda Horn still on the top ten for for yeah. um, for RBIs, and she still doesn't have a home yet. She's on there for slugging percentage too. Yeah. Yeah, she's we got Buster Biggs for on base percentage. Yeah, look at that around the horn. Buster Biggs leads with uh, most hits. He's got seventy hits. Billy LeBoink with 50, 59. Yeah. And he's uh he's in third place. Buster Biggs has it almost locked up. I guess we can't really be pulling Buster Biggs out for these guys. I pulled him out, you know, again, because he was over three and and we you know, we I just thought I'd give some but uh he's trying to get that he's trying to cap that you know, top hits for the for the league. So we should let him make sure he yeah. gets that that spot. Well, he's he's leading the league right now in hits and stolen bases. Mm. Ronda Ronda Horn's third for extra extra base hits. And uh, yeah, no, that's, so yeah, we're yeah. just saying batting stolen base. Yeah, he's top for stolen bases. He's tied for Yoink sacks. And yeah. Then, uh, and then caught stealing decks. Biggs, Biggs, he's got 16 stolen bases, but takes six off of that for getting caught. <laughs> it's a little overconfident, but I mean, I guess, I guess you got to spend money to make it. Gina Torrens on there, caught stealing three times. Yep. Pitching. Early bender. 0 0.90 whip. Oh, I'm not. Ortiz does it. 0 0.99. Yeah. Hurley bender. 87 strikeouts. 87. So, hopefully Slayer pitched his last game of the season. I think he did, probably did because they usually line these up fairly equally. I think, yeah, I think like you say, I think Bender's going to get the most strikeouts on the season for all pitchers. The most strikeouts at 87 strikeouts in eight games. That's great. You know what? Oh. And if we can get it, if we can have... Japani end the season with a ten strikeout game against the uh, Herbosaurus. Mm -hmm. She she'd be she'd uh, finish the season in third. Yeah, boy, you know oh. I, I grunted though. I, I saw Hurley better eighty seven strikeouts. Way to go, Hurley! The star pitcher's making 17, 17 large yeah. on the year. He's <laughs> he's going to be an expensive resign. Oh, he, oh well. Anyway, only way strikeouts. Yeah, Japani. For strikeouts in nine, she actually has more strikeouts per nine. Yep. So tune in next time, folks. Hopefully it'll be Wednesday. I got it on the schedule on Twitch. So hopefully we'll be on Wednesday around uh, 10 o'clock Central. Yeah. And tune in for game 42. It's going to be the Outlaws visiting the B-Wolves. The Outlaws are 17 and 25, but they are power hitters. Yes. Against the 21 and 20 contact specialist b -Wolves. Yes, Pete J. Play on Twitch if you want to see it live. And again, uh, 10 or 10, 15-ish. You know, hang in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're married with families, so we, we you know, yeah. sometimes we got obligations. Again. But yes, 
So until then, we look forward to seeing you for the 42nd game of 44 in Phoenix. And uh, we'll see you then. Until then, it's Tommy G. And this is PJ. And we're saying, get out of here. That's what we're doing. Get